As we take a look at the new year, here's what the schedule entails for the Canadian men's national team. So they still have a chance to qualify for Copa America on March 23rd. It's the play-in round. Later tonight, Mexico and Honduras play. If Mexico wins, Canada will play Trinidad and Tobago. If Honduras wins, Canada will play Costa Rica for that chance to play in Copa America, which goes June 20th to July 14th. Between June 3rd and 11th, there is an international window. You know, all eyes will be on Canada soccer to see who they can get for the men's team to play, having missed a window in September. Also, what's going to come up in the new years, we welcome you back to the show and inside our One Soccer studio, Andy Jordan and Carm with you. As we know, Canada Soccer, relatively soon in the new year, they want to name a general secretary. Right now, Jason DeVos is the interim general secretary. They want somebody in that position permanently, and they want that person to be tasked with hiring a head coach. Mauro Biello has put his name in the hat. He says, I want this. Mm -hmm. um, so how... How busy, you know, is this next month or so going to be for Canada soccer? And do you think this result plays into their decision when it comes to Mauro Biello? Or was it always going to be a new general secretary kind of doing their thing? Well, to answer your first question, it's crucial. I think everyone who watches this game and loves it knows that you need people in place. We need a general secretary. We need someone to lay down the law. We need something moving forward so that everyone can have something concrete yeah. uh, in place. That's the first thing. Marbiello, this was an opportunity to go and show that he can get things right. And it fell, it's crazy, because halftime we're singing praises yeah. and just how quickly it crumbled. Now it's, it's, it's difficult, because you brought in the guys that you knew, you played guys that you knew, and you still didn't get the job done. And we know now in the culture, it's not really so much about the players. The first thing you look at is a manager. Always. Can they get the best <laughs> out of this group? Definitely. That is the number one question. And you can have a good time and be rolling with it for a little bit, but as, as, if you get into a run of losing big games, it's on the manager. So now it's, it's a tall order for, for Biello. Yeah, and no matter how we feel about it, it was probably about three out of four halves of football done pretty well and yeah. done right, if you want to look at it objectively. But when you don't get the ultimate job done, you're going to dig, you're going to go for the top first. Uh, agree with your comments around general secretary. You need somebody getting this country back on track. Um, not that Jason isn't doing that. I'm just saying somebody permanently with the vision looking towards this home World Cup that's going to, you know, competitions drive everything else, don't they? They start to order all the development, all the uh, sort of priorities within the country. So I'm very much, and I think we all are looking forward to that appointment. Looking ahead to 2026 World Cup, I think squad selection, I mean, it always matters, but I think people are going to be scrutinizing it even more because there is a real belief that players who are currently on this squad will not be here for 2026. Like, you automatically just look at the players based on age. Mm -hmm. So you automatically look at a Steven Vittoria or you start to look at a Milan Borian. So in the new year, in that game, March 23rd, which is a crucial game, they end up going to Copa that international window, do you want to see more of the players you feel legitimately have a chance to be with this 2026 World Cup squad? For me, the answer is yes, and an absolute yes, because you need to see, they need those experiences heading into the biggest world stage. That's a guarantee for them. They need to know how it feels to play against the best nations under the highest pressure, and even if they're not fully ready, there's no other way to get ready. You need to start ripping the Band-Aid and giving players minutes. You asked me today, I would say that ride with the guys that you've been riding with. But I'm also looking at July in the Nation League final. We played, similar to a squad tonight, veterans that you knew. At a point, you gotta, you gotta try something new. You gotta bring in some new guys and new flavor. I'm not saying that this group isn't getting things done. I'm saying that there needs to be some fresh blood infused into this group. Not all at once. Carm, your manager, you know you can't go and put eight new, new guys on no, the pitch. Healthy competition, that's Two, it. Two, three. Guys, do you feel that deserve it? Because I think this group needs some infusion of new talent, new, new, new hunger to really just put themselves on the line. Do you think sometimes a new coach who has zero attachment can do that? That's always the biggest debate, you know. It's, it's something you're building on. Do they believe in the initial vision to say that Mauro is going to continue to push it forward and they like the initial vision? There's nothing to say it was poor or bad. They've made history, this team, time and time again. We talked about it all night. But to your point, if this, if this needs a refresh, only they will know from the players' debriefs, from the staff debriefs, the stuff we may not even really know what's going on. Um, I, I couldn't say that confidently right now, that they need a full new vision. I, I don't know that right now. It's so difficult because it's, it's a coin with, with two sides. The one side, Canada go out and, and win this game today. Marbiel got everything right. 
Literally. That's how close. No. Literally. <laughs> literally. Went to Jamaica, went to Independence Park, took care of business, came to BMO, took care of business. It's true. And then it flipped and went on another side, and now we're questioning everything. Football can be cruel sometimes. That is literally the world of sport. They pull off their first victory in Jamaica since 1988. They come out flying here. To your point, if you look at it, four halves, three, they Perfect. dominate. Fantastic. This is, you know, but you're right. The end result is what matters, and this is a team that keeps talking about wanting to win trophies and being the best in CONCACAF. And right now, this was a big misstep tonight. So this is uh, going to be a lot of debriefing here, seeing what they can do. They have to gather things because they still have a massive game that will be coming up in March of next year. It is a loss here to Jamaica here tonight. It is a loss, first go, to qualify for Copa America and definitely a loss to qualify for the Final Four in CONCACAF Nations League. Jamaica moving on. You've been watching the matches right here on One Soccer. On behalf of Carmelina Moscato, Jordan Wilson, I'm Annie Petrillo. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.